I'll start introducing by my company, Zero Energy Design Lab. We are an architecture interior design uh, practice. Our focus is on designing buildings which are more user-centric and place-specific. Um, we believe that um, the building energy usage can be brought down by uh, the usage of uh, various passive vernacular and other techniques. And this is where we bring in our research and uh, make design based on uh, place specific vernacular architecture. Now, what are net zero buildings? You know, these are any building which whose energy can be replaced by generating renewable energy on site or off site can be net zero but that makes that doesn't make it an extremely efficient net zero building our idea is to first lower down the energy usage of the building so that the demand side of renewable energy can be more affordable hence we use the word affordable net zero buildings while designing our buildings wherein the attempt is to first measure, minimize, and then mitigate. So mitigate, which is generating on-site renewable energy is our last attempt. And uh, by reducing the demand, we make it more affordable for the client on the longer run. So what causes high energy demand and overheating in hot climates? Now, the basic question is that do the building actually need air conditioning or uh, uh, you know the air conditioning during the summers or you know cooling uh, heating during the winter seasons what are the causes so in the residential or any buildings where the internal heat gains are not high it is the direct solar exposure and lack of shading in the building along with poor thermal insulation which radiate a lot of heat from convective and conductive gain from outside into the building. And then, you know, eventually we have the internal gains in form of high occupancy levels and equipments as well, which become a heat trap because of no ventilation and non-openable windows. What is the solution? The solution is to minimize the heat gain and mitigate it. Now here is a very good example of what we are currently doing. It is a southeast elevation of any typical, you know, uh, commercial building which is coming up in the NCR region, which is completely glazed for, you know, A, it is the cheapest way to build a facade. B, uh, the maintenance of glass is probably the easiest um, with respect to, you know, uh, the builder. And see, it gets you uh, fascinating views of the city. So that is the reason why glass is more preferred. However, you know, with respect to the user, it gives you higher uh, glare inside the spaces. So it becomes very, very difficult uh, to get normal diffuse light in the daytime. And because of the glare, the shades are always on. Um, the second problem it creates is the heating, you know, with all excessive heating and increasing the energy performance of the building. Um, because of the enhanced energy requirement, you know, your capital cost and your running cost of equipment is increasing. And still there is not much comfort, especially in the areas which are adjacent to the windows. Whereas on your right, a similar facade can be dealt in a more efficient and, and environmental friendly way which responds to the sun path by shading the glass from the sun not obstructing the view too much so the shading is designed in a way so that at the eye level you still get uh, unobstructed panoramic views because of no direct radiation and thermal mass the performance of the building is much better and the uh, user doesn't have to use the blinds uh, during the daytime now, this is a pure example of, you know, the heating and the cooling load of a non-shaded and a shaded building with or without thermal mass. You can see 
a glass building is following uh, the profile of the external temperature because of having very less mass, whereas the building with the thermal mass is uh, trying to be a straight line, which is avoiding overheating during the peak hours and providing you comfort. And it stays below 30 degrees uh, predominantly throughout the day, whereas a lightweight building is pretty much following the, uh, the graph of the external temperature. And this is purely because of your material choices and orientation and shading design. Now, if you can see the difference between the peak hours temperatures between a lightweight and a heavy uh, thermal mass building, and you can imagine the amount of energy it requires, you know, um, uh, just because of the bad designing and bad choices of materials. This is another example where, uh, you know, the architect goes a step ahead and give user more control over the building. And while designing for uninterrupted views from inside to outside, the extensive shading is designed as a canopy and openable windows are provided for user comfort. So giving an opportunity uh, to the user to adapt, to be able to use the building as per his own choice, uh, further you know, enhance the thermal performance of the building. It, it allows or give you an opportunity for free cooling whenever the temperature in, in Delhi, for example, six months outside, you have very, very preferable temperature outside where one can open the window and live with natural ventilation. It is only during the next six months when the humidity levels or the heat uh, goes up, that's where you don't need the openable windows. So by creating such uh, user preferable options, one can further enhance the thermal comfort and performance of the building. And one can see that with windows open, you know, suddenly your performance of the thermal mass enhances. The graph clearly shows that the one with window closed, it attracts all the heat throughout the day and doesn't give the building opportunity to lose its heat during the night time when the temperature goes down or loses heat of the internal space to the night sky through radiative cooling. And this is the basic reason why urban heat islands uh, in the cities are becoming a major, major problem because we are not able to ventilate or allow the heat loss during the night hours when the sun is not there. This is where openable windows or good urban design uh, street width, with height to uh, width ratios can make a huge difference in overall performance with respect to urban heat islands. Further to shading, thermal mass, and window to wall ratio and openings, one of the primary aspects which our traditional and vernacular practice was uh, the inclusion of transition spaces in the building, which further enhance uh, the relationship between the indoors and the outdoors, which is very, very important, not only with respect to temperature performance or thermal performance of the building, but also with respect to giving an additional space to the user uh, uh, for psychological benefits for, you know, uh, creating a buffer space where one can take a break from his routine work or routine activities. These transition spaces were used in various building typology in different ways and hence become not only uh, important from the thermal performance or daylighting performance point of view, but also from the use perspective as well. And that is where the term adaptive comfort also come into picture. Now, by creating these spaces, one gives an opportunity to the user to adapt and move, you know, between spaces based on their own comfort choices. For example, um, during the daytime, uh, they would be inside the building and during the evening hours when the building is slightly warmer, but the outside air temperature has dropped down and the solar heat is also not an issue. They can move to semi-open spaces like verandas, courtyards, and other such spaces, which doesn't really 
forces a user to use active energy modes like air conditioning at all time. And hence, uh, uh, the user is able to use the building in a better way. Now, they can be used in design based on uh, climatic conditions in a hotter climate. You can have a courtyard, you can have a veranda, which can give you shade, which can have greens, which can be used for various things. Now, why are these transition spaces important? The major thing is that if you imagine a building in a climate, hot and extreme climate like Gurgaon, where the extreme varies between 45 degrees to five degrees, and the internal temperature demand lies somewhere between 26 to 24 degrees. You know, the delta T, which is the temperature difference between the inside and the outside is 20 degrees, which is a huge load on the facade and the building heating and cooling performance with respect to thermal comfort. If we move the same building without changing the facade design or the internal conditions, to a climatic zone like London, where outside air temperature never exceed 29 degrees, you know, uh, the cooling load of the building drops down drastically. And the reason is because of the change in the external climatics, uh, climatic conditions. So it is not the internal, it, it is not the building which needs, um, uh, you know, cooling, but it is how you treat the environment around the building which can decrease the heating load or the cooling load of the building. Now, this is where the transition space, which is an in-between space between the inside and the outside, we call it as a third space, can become a very, very important design elements, which was practiced uh, previously in our traditional buildings um, very, very effectively, because there was no alternate uh, active cooling mode available at that point of time. What are these transition spaces now? They try to be at the mean temperature between the inside and the outside, and hence create an opportunity for building to use lesser active mode energies, or uh, decrease the capital cost with respect to energy requirement, and also lower down the cost of the building uh, with respect to the running of, for such energy uses. Now, this, these are some of the examples where one can see, you know, uh, post-occupancy uh, analysis of such buildings uh, give us the way out why, you know, such spaces are very, very important. This is somewhere um, in the middle of uh, European climate where uh, one can see that when the external temperature is touching 35 degrees, the veranda is at 30 degrees and the internal temperature of the building with heavy thermal mass is at 25 degrees. Now the reason for the internal and uh, uh, temperature being at a lower limit is because of extensive thermal mass and the shading and uh, uh, the extensive thermal performance of the veranda which is helping the principal space in having better environmental performance. You can see that the veranda stays at the mean between the inside and the outside, decreasing the delta T between the inside and the outside by 10 degrees, which is a substantial uh, 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 decrease in the uh, heat load of the building. This is another example in Singapore where a non-usable space uh, near Clark A, the plaza was extensively uh, hot and uh, so it became very, very important uh, with respect to the user that they install shading devices and to further enhance the comfort, they installed evaporative cooling um, at the occupancy level uh, so that even during the daytime, uh, the public space becomes usable. And that has enhanced the performance, uh, uh, outdoor performance of the public space. More users are now able to use um, the whole urban stretch for a longer uh, period of the day. And secondly, it also decreases uh, the cooling load and the heating load of the buildings surrounding this public space because it is not only the, uh, uh, the direct impact of the climate on the building, but it is also the radiant heat from the surrounding, which is microclimate, 
which is impacting the thermal performance of the building. And one can see that uh, by doing uh, inducing evaporative cooling and shading, uh, the comfort hours were almost uh, doubles. You know, uh, before they were only forty one percent, and after putting the shading, uh, inducing plantations, and evaporative cooling, the outdoor comfort hours for the users uh, were increased from forty percent to eighty percent. And these are very very you know. Um, good analytical data which one can uh, uh, you know realize how these transitional spaces become very very important part of any net zero approach building uh, the third thing is after you know uh, uh, measure and minimizing by using passive techniques uh, the third thing which comes into uh, picture um, is mitigating through renewable energy. Now, uh, India has is very rich in solar energy and you receive a very high amount of uh, 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 solar gains all throughout the day. And one can utilize the solar energy to generate on-site or off-site electricity, which can be utilized, which can be clean, clean, and can be utilized to run the building and decrease uh, the demand of the building on the grid. Uh, typically, a kilowatt roof systems uh, take up 12 square meters of space, and in India, to generate one kilowatt energy, it approximately costs 60 to 70 thousand rupees. Now, uh, this is still on a very, very higher side. The expectation of the market is to uh, reduce it by one third, and uh, so that it becomes more affordable and more applicable on a larger scale basis. Um, because it is still highly unaffordable for any user and poor efficiency of the solar cells, it becomes very, very crucial for, for architects to design the building for lower energy demand. There are many such buildings which have utilized it extensively. Um, Indriya Parabhavan um, uses a combination of all such uh, what uh, technologies which we have talking about, it uses thermal mass, right orientation, control window to wall ratio, renewable energy and shading as well. And the, uh, the performance, post occupancy uh, performance clearly shows uh, the benefit and uh, uh, it stays energy positive during all throughout the summer period. And it is only when the sun hours are low during the uh, uh, monsoon periods, that's where the energy demand of the building is ex exceeding uh, the solar performance. So the three major steps in approach to net zeros are measure, minimize, and mitigate. First, you understand the climate in which you are building, understand the traditional and the vernacular with respect to passive features. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. One needs to understand and carefully study how you know and what difference does it make to the performance of the building and then try to adopt such features to minimize uh, the load on the building once you have measured and minimized then the energy demand required to mitigate is very low and becomes a very very affordable project to be applied on urban basis on large scale This is a clear graph showing that how passive strategies drastically de decrease you know, the energy load and it includes optimized building uh, envelope, shading and daylighting, thermal mass, and alternate cooling uh, performance like evaporative cooling, double evaporative cooling. Uh, you can go for earth air tunnel systems and many such passive strategies which can bring down uh, the need on the active strategies. Once uh, you have minimized and then you can rely on energy efficient code, um, you know, ECBCs and other uh, rating systems for defining your active strategies where one can look into uh, designing the air conditioning load with equipments which are uh, less energy intensive. For example, replacing you know the air-cooled chillers with water-cooled, or 
replacing the complete water pool systems with radiant cooling. So there are many such active, low energy active strategies where building can run on a very, very less energy demand and then mitigate it to net zero using renewable energy. Uh, one such example of uh, close to net zero buildings is our own project, uh, which is a St. Andrews hostel building in Gurgaon. This is the master plan clearly spotting um, on the north zone in, in the triangular section, we have the residential portion of the campus. And on the southern part, we have the academic blocks. Uh, the buildings were given as uh, linear to us in the master plan and they were oriented north south. Uh, the idea was to create a site within a site kind of a situation because uh, they want some sense of privacy and protection uh, for the girls hostel. They didn't want any intrusion from uh, the rest of the campus into this uh, uh, kind of a bounded campus uh, where the girls were supposed to live. In spite of a site within a site, the ideation of the client was to create a home away from home where they are not restricted within the building. And the, they were hoping to create many zones where different activities with respect to student life can happen. The climate uh, with respect to Gurgaon was that the extreme was touching 40 to 45 degrees and it stays pretty low uh, goes down to somewhere around eight degrees in the peak winters. Um, we chose to go with um, adaptive comfort thermal graph to extend the comfort zone. And we challenged the basic idea of air conditioning. Um, why to air condition the building? And with respect to that, uh, if we see the adaptive comfort graph, we see that uh, during the summer period, uh, the thermal performance of the building, the Delta T was actually uh, not more than eight to 10 degrees. Even if we ex exceeds to 45 degrees, it was not more than 15 degrees. During the monsoon and the winter season, because of the adaptive comfort thermal zone, uh, the performance uh, of the building was pretty much within the comfort zone with respect to the external climate. Hence, not much was actually required to be done during the monsoon and the winter season. And this is where free cooling and uh, intelligent planning can come into picture to lower down the heating and the cooling demand on the building. After analyzing the climate, we understood that uh, it is not, it is very, very crucial to have thermal mass it is very crucial to have a, a buffer space, which is a transition zone between the inside and the outside to create multiple uh, spaces, not only to increase or enhance the thermal performance of the building, but also to create more user specific and diverse spaces where one can interact uh, with their peers uh, in groups of smaller number or larger numbers and do physical or station activities. So the idea was to create a, a blanketed facade, uh, which houses a courtyard on the south and balconies on the north side. This courtyard on the south were, was then in, encased with a fire escape staircase, which becomes as a social nucleus. Now, predominantly these staircases are dead spaces uh, which the, the occupancy levels and the usage is very limited to 10% of as opposed to other places. So we, we thought that why not, you know, make, uh, bring it out in the courtyard and make it part of the social space so that the building can become an interactive zone, not only horizontally, but also vertically connecting all the spaces visually, acoustically and physically as well. So while going up, you are able to look out of the building. It creates a nice vibe while uh, going up onto your you know, respective floors. While doing that, you not incidentally, you end up meeting you know, different people and where you know, terraces were provided for stop interactions, which were further club with lounges. Now, this not only creates opportunity of interaction and uh, 
a different diverse activity, but also create a layer of transition spaces uh, which can help in improving um, or avoiding a thermal shock situation from 45 degrees while user moves from outside to inside where the temperature varies between 45 degrees to 33 degrees inside, uh, a delta T of almost 12 degrees. So when you move from inside to outside, you have a very smooth transition. You move from your room into the lounge, to the terrace, into the staircase, and then further outside the building. And hence, uh, different transition zones were kept at different temperature to enhance the thermal performance and uh, make the journey of the user from inside to outside or vice versa more comfortable. Uh, then we did some insulation analysis to understand how we can uh, further reduce uh, the radiation impact because it is the direct and the diffuse radiation which impacts at least 30 to 40 percent of the cooling load. Uh, by designing the balconies on the south, we were only able to reduce uh, the radiation in some part of the building. The horizontal surface was still receiving very high level of radiations. Um, we further introduce the social staircase and then have the pergola and the parametric skin enclosing, uh, blanketing the building, which reduces the direct and the diffuse radiation on the south and the north facade by almost 60% on the vertical surface and 40% on the horizontal surface, making a very, very favorable microclimate outside and decrease the demand of enhanced cavity walls or insulated walls on the external envelope, hence saving cost as well. This is the plan of the building, um, wherein uh, we were talking about those transition spaces while moving from outside to inside, you first come through the plaza, which is heavily planted and have porous surfaces. The greens decrease the urban height, heat island and create some kind of a shading and reduce the radiant heat. From zone one, you move into zone two, which is a glass enclosed lobby where the air is uh, air is controlled. And because of the double height, you don't really feel the heat. When you move from the double height space into the staircase, that's where the permeable skin allows air movement while shading it from the direct and the diffuse radiation, creating a cooling impact overall. And from there, you actually start moving into the building. So there were layers before you move into the building. And from the rooms, you can, on the ground floor, come out to the lobby, which becomes a kind of a social uh, semi-outdoor space. And from there, you have an option of either choosing the courtyard or the double height lobby for your different daily activities. We also introduce a pantry and an outdoor dining space. Uh, so it becomes a diverse, public space where different uh, users can utilize it in different formats. So you have outdoor seating, you have outdoor dining, you have badminton courts, you have the courtyard on the south and the indoor gaming area as well. This activity doesn't really uh, get limited to the lower level. So the user on the upper level have the terraces and the lounges on each level for them to get engaged into these activities on their respective floors as well. So uh, these social spaces are all uh, engaged on different levels to um, uh, enhance the user's experience uh, all throughout the building. This is the section showing the uh, transition space. Now, when you're outside, it is not the heat or direct uh, it is not the air temperature which makes you feel uncomfortable. It is the radiant heat uh, from your microclimate which makes the 45 degrees feels like 55 degrees. Once you're inside uh, uh, the transition zone, the air temperature remains 45 degrees. But because of the thermal mass uh, of the principal skin and the parametric block facade, uh, the radiant heat is reduced. The courtyard having plantation through evapotranspirization process further enhance the microclimate and the shading from the direct and diffuse radiation makes 45 feels like 39 degrees. Once you move in from these 
uh, uh, transition spaces further into the semi-private spaces, uh, there the internal temperature post uh, the construction of the building was observed to be 32 degrees. And hence, you have the smoother movement and enhanced performance uh, of the building. The ceiling fans were further induced to create more air circulation and further enhance uh, the thermal performance of the building. The parametric facade was designed using a sustainable uh, low carbon impact hollow concrete block. Uh, the block was concrete, made up of concrete, but it was hollow to enhance air movement. And also the depth of the block doesn't really allow any direct radiation to trespass at any point and fuse. And in fact, it diffuses all the radiations and uh, enhance the daylighting performance of the space. We wrote a parametric script wherein, based on the insulation analysis on the primary facade, the blocks were then rotated to optimize daylight and reduce uh, the direct and the diffuse radiation on the primary facade. The rotated blocks then created a parametric buffer space, which is statically creating a new modern uh, facade using the traditional concept. Um, to further enhance, uh, uh, you know, both the uh, aesthetics as well as the thermal performance of the building. Uh, this is the daylighting analysis showing that even in on the worst day, which is uh, or the brightest of the day, where the twenty first uh, June, where the sun and the heat is brightest and uh, the heating load is is pretty high, um, without the because of the transition space, the amount of daylighting in the rooms, the lux level were never exceeding 350. And hence, there was no glare in the room and no overheating happening uh, on the rooms on the south. And the north was automatically having a better performance uh, with respect to the thermal comfort and daylighting as well. This is the temperature graph uh, showing the thermal performance of the building by inducing uh, the transition space, thermal mass, and lowering down our window to wall ratio, we were able to achieve a delta T of three degrees uh, uh, or oh, six degrees between the uh, inside and the outside uh, just by inducing that transition space. Without that transition space, the delta T was uh, between the inside and the outside was three degrees. So uh, during the peak hours of, uh, throughout the summers, we were primarily very much within the upper limit of the adaptive comfort zone. With ceiling fans, uh, we were able to reduce the adaptive comfort zone by further one degree. And hence, our number of cooling hours, uh, number of hours for adaptive cooling were increased to almost 80 to 85 percent within the space. Uh, there was 18 percent reduction by using the passive techniques. Um, the air conditioning system was not designed as, uh, you know, they were not very sure about uh, uh, what will be the demand uh, of the end user and uh, no centralized system, air conditioning system was proposed just by uh, uh, taking the passive design techniques into consideration and creating this third space between the inside and the outside, we were able to reduce the energy demand of the building by almost 18%. These are some of the images and renderings uh, showing the social space, the staircase connecting visually and creating a social hub, uh, which where one can interact with the person on any level, any which way. Uh, some of the material palettes used in different thermal zones have the green buffer in the plaza outside in the double height reception. Uh, we have a different transition zone uh, uh, with respect to having more glazing to reduce the air movement. We have thermal mass on the roof to provide shade and absorb the internal heat. 
when we go to the staircase, as I explained, we have the skin and the pergola on top to create more comfort and moving into the building. So we used only very limited material palette to reduce our carbon footprint. We used exposed brickwork, quota stone, and uh, the concrete block pigmented to match the texture and tone of the bricks. Um, most of these materials were sourced within 200 kilometer range of the site. And uh, we chose these material palette A because they gave us the permanent finish. Uh, they have a very high thermal performance and the local labor were very skilled to be able to work with these product at a very cheap price. Hence, we were able to build a building um, with high energy efficiency at a very low cost. These, this is the entrance plaza with extensive green and shading and the entrance lobby with the glass facade and the extensive roof canopy, which is shading the glass at all time. That's a social staircase and the courtyard underneath, which can be used during the daytime as it is shaded and during the nighttime as staircase becomes the lighting element. While moving up, you are able to look out and peep out uh, out of this enclosed box building, creating a panoramic view of uh, the overall campus and the green central plaza. This is the lounge, uh, which is in use on all floors for social activities. So based on their own uh, usage, you can see that they can have larger windows for cross ventilation, or they can move on to the terrace based on their own adaptive comfort strategy. Ceiling fans uh, were provided to further enhance um, uh, the performance of these internal spaces. This is the block parametric facade, which creates a new aesthetic typology uh, you know, it's it's a replica of what is being done previously in traditional buildings where jarokas and jalis were created to look out. These blocks were uh, uh, eight inches by eight inches by eight inches by increasing the size to eight inches, the view out possibility was enhanced. And uh, because of the depth, the radiations were reduced on the primary skin. So this is the view from the central green looking onto the building. Moving on to the boys hostel where a simple, uh, you know, uh, it was more open approachable building which has public space surrounding on all sides. So we wanted to create different diverse public space where based on the climatic conditions, user can choose whether to be on the north or south of the building whether to be in the shade or in the sun space during the winter season. Now, here also a placketed facade, you know, similar typology was um, used as a primary principle to improve uh, the thermal performance of the building to make it almost affordable in net zero. It was a given linear mass, which was twisted, simply twisted as by creating courtyard, we were losing impactful space. The building area requirements was pretty high. Hence, we were not able to create any intermediate space. By twisting the block, we were able to create a summer and a winter court, uh, uh, a social space on the ground floor and on the second floor level, which can be used uh, by the users. Uh, the shaded court also acts as a transition space, which uh, helps in smoother transition from outside to inside. Also, you know, uh, being on the south side, it shades the lower floors of the building uh, without any additional shading devices and decrease uh, the uh, usage of uh, insulation or high performance glass on the lower two floors to further enhance the performance on the upper two levels. We introduce a second skin, which enclose the balcony and create a transition space in the sky. This is showing why we twisted the building. Uh, the insulation analysis clearly shows that uh, the lower two floors and the plaza, the radiations were almost reduced uh, to 70% as opposed to a plain standing block. So mutual shaded surfaces and uh, uh, horizontal, not only vertically, but also horizontally for uh, 
a building where inside and outside performance and usage can be enhanced was very, very essential. And by introducing the jali on the upper level into the balconies, we were able to reduce the radiations by 50% on the facade, hence enhancing the thermal performance of the building and decreasing uh, uh, the reliance on expensive uh, high performance glazing and insulation on the principal facade. This is the comparison between the summer and the winter insulation analysis where one can see that during the summer, uh, you know, uh, the summer coat was extensively shaded and during the winters, uh, you have uh, solar access even onto the terrace in the corner and in the shaded space as well. Uh, in this section, the building has uh, given opportunities to the users to be able to come out. The, uh, the primary facade is always kept shaded from the direct and diffuse by introducing this transition space on the upper two level, uh, which is in form of balconies. Uh, it stays closer uh, to the primary facade. And on the lower floors, we have the public shaded public space, which, which helps in doing the same thing. This is the view of the room showing that uh, there was enough daylight while providing effective shading. Uh, extensive glass was used uh, so that one can look out of the building and um, the skin was kept open from the top so that one can always see the sky and all the radiant heat from the balcony and the transition space can be lost during the nighttime, not creating a heat trap. Um, by creating a cut out on the lower level and the upper level balcony, the interaction within the two floors was also possible. And it becomes a very interesting space where uh, people from different levels come together and they start interacting during the evening time. The brick was used as an external skin hair. Uh, we introduced stagger the brick to um, allow some daylight penetration into the building. It was further stacked because the overlap area between the two pits was pretty much reduced by 75%. We were not able to use uh, mortar as a bonding agent. Hence, we introduced these specially customized single hole bricks through which uh, we inserted a steel rod uh, and pivoted the brick uh, uh, along that. These rotation angles helps in creating self shading facade while allowing for more view uh, opportunities to outside. And one can see that uh, between the inside and the outside, a delta T temperature of five degrees uh, was achieved uh, with the help of the transition space. This is the view of uh, the entrance uh, lobby where an atrium was introduced to take away all the all smell all the heat trap inside the building up uh, uh, and escape it out from the roof level. Uh, the shaded courtyard uh, allow and introduce the cool air at all times, you know, to enter into the lobby and then the hot air rises up allowing uh, the atrium to be cooled through stack ventilation. This is uh, the mess on the ground floor, which is uh, daylit and having an access to the urban plaza both on the north and the south. Uh, the terrace on the north. Uh, this is the room where one can see that it's a triple shared room having its own, um, each one having its own uh, kind of a zone and the access to the balcony where you can look out and there is no need for uh, screening the windows as the brick wall is um, uh, giving you an opportunity of privacy. So one cannot look from outside to inside, but uh, one staying inside can always have an opportunity to look outside. It decreases the glare, which you can see in the picture, and also gives you an opportunity uh, to be closer to the thermal mass um, and uh, you know, create this additional space outside the room where one can always move out 
uh, you know, after extensive study hours or sleeping hours. This is showing the interaction between the upper level and the lower level balconies. That's the north side view opening into the central green plaza. And the last is the house under shadow where uh, in the extreme climate of Karnal, uh, we learn from the traditional buildings like Moon Hill, which is built on traditional principles of having the chalk, a courtyard in the building and a double roof system on top. The double roof, uh, uh, it's a larger plot where the client doesn't really want a multi-story building. He always want an extensive uh, garden as an extended floor to the indoors. Hence, he wanted to build a building uh, on a uh, ground floor primarily so that he can access uh, the gardens uh, all the time. And hence, uh, there were extensive heat loads on the horizontal roof, which was uh, not really helping in the thermal performance of the building. Also, you know, by creating this double roof, we were not only able to reduce uh, the heat load, but also create an upper level comfortable space, which can be used during the day or the evening time and give panoramic views of the greens uh, surrounding the plots. This is an insulation analysis uh, clearly showing the performance of the Varnoi roof, which was uh, a permeable skin design using fiber reinforced polymer, which is a permanent finish, doesn't need maintenance and very light in weight uh, so that it can be erected uh, without using much uh, so very, very extensive structural system. It spans almost uh, 200 feet in length and 75 feet in width. Um, it creates a very nice uh, shading impact on overall spaces inside the building. Uh, not only reduce uh, the heating load or the cooling load of the building, but also creates a very damp uh, shadow patterns, uh, which keep on changing throughout the sun movement and create you know, uh, different modes and aspects within the building. This is the plan. The plot was actually uh, uh, designed to be used by two brothers. So a central uh, space plaza was created where the two families can meet. And then, you know, surrounding the greens were extensively clubbed with the internal spaces for their own private usage. Uh, they both have the central courtyard um, so that one can all, always choose whether to be inside or outside based on their preference of the diagonal seasonal change. Um, during the daytime, they can be in the courtyard. The water body was clubbed to further enhance the microclimate within the courtyard. It acts as a heat sinks and absorb all the radiant heat. Um, the pergola, shaded pergola and the water body makes uh, the courtyard a very favorable space all throughout the day. It doesn't really only limited usage to thermal performance, but also increase the aesthetic value of uh, the entrance court where one enters and, you know, can see the water or during the night time, the water is, uh, the pool is beautifully lit and the reflections of the pool on the wall create very nice ambience um, um, all throughout the day. Uh, the Varnoi roof, sitting over the pool uh, shades uh, the pool effectively. Um, the cool air, the air gets cool all throughout the day by getting exposure uh, to the central water court and the hot air, you know, from the central vista always rises up, creating a static effect and cooling down the courtyard and the surrounding spaces at all times. During the night time, because of the perforated views, uh, the water and the horizontal surfaces are able to lose its heat to the light style. Uh, principal spaces like drawing room and the bedroom have cross ventilation potentials at all time. Um, they have an outer window opening into the garden space and the inner window opening into the pool courtyard. This always Uh, enhances the thermal performance and uh, give users a choice 
we can they can you know screen off the external windows which were doubly glazed and the internal windows uh, which were opening to the pool sites were kept uh, larger and the external windows were kept um, um, especially in the southwest where the bedrooms were placed as a smaller mass to further enhance the performance of the building thermal mass along with uh, uh, stone walls uh, coliumine stone dry cladded was used to further enhance the thermal performance of the building by using such passive features we were able to reduce uh, the cooling load by 20% to enhance uh, uh, the requirement for extensive cooling was substantially reduced throughout the year these are some of the views of the vanoi roof creating shade not only on the horizontal surface but on the vertical surface and the dappling shadows uh, by differentiating in the way they fall on different surfaces create beautiful ambience all throughout the day uh, the overhangs and the scale were kept higher uh, for the user to experience a very palatial kind of a spatial scale the greens were not only limited to the inside uh, they were brought inside or uh, outside they were brought inside as well to further enhance uh, uh, the aesthetical performance as well as the thermal performance of the internal transition spaces and you can see that the cross ventilated windows allow a uh, uh, user to not only interact with the internal open space but also take the advantage of the cooler air cooling the bedrooms at all times the shadows of the vanoi grid not only cools the building but also the surrounding areas decreasing the radiant heat and creating more favorable spaces outside which can be used even during the daytime and uh, the boundary between the inside and the outside you, you can choose you know you can see the living room here which is almost as an extension to the inside where the pool is or to the outside where the green is so different uh, kind of material surfaces were used to create uh, uh, different aesthetical uh, uh, spaces and and improve the thermal performance of the overall project as well that's the central avenue thank you thank you for an extremely insightful presentation architect sachin it was very interesting to see all the examples that you've taken us through to explain thermal comfort to us the innovative facades that you've shown and the transition spaces in particular so before we end the session i have a couple of questions for you yeah so does the construction process itself play a role in classifying a building as an nz uh, uh, net zero building or is it is it just something that you have to follow while conceptualizing uh, is it something that designers have no i think in the net zero building uh, depends like uh, in a carbon neutral building yes uh, the construction process plays a huge role because the construction waste you know our industry is just talking about purely reducing uh, the material waste on site is almost more than 30 to 35% and uh, uh, there are uh, huge discussions in the society for building the building off site and actually importing the building from the factories and then erecting them to a reduce the construction waste to b whatever the construction waste is there can be better utilized if the building is built off site hence uh, yes the construction process plays a huge role uh, in a carbon neutral building but it doesn't play uh, much of a role in the thermal performance of the building with respect to a net zero building all right so is the payback period a concern for any of the builders or clients is is in any of the projects that you were involved in was this an issue that you had to face ever it is always in a matter of concern and that's where an affordable uh, uh, i i use the word affordable net zero is very very important and measure minimize mitigate always ensure that uh, the capital required to 
mitigate eventually the energy cost by using renewables uh, comes down to almost in the affordability bracket of the client. But typically anything which is in the five years payback period bracket uh, is, is always cherished and affordable uh, uh, by the client. Anything which is exceeding that is, is not really, uh, you know, helping the overall situation. But, uh, you know, with improvement in technology, the cost of integrating these renewable energy into the projects is becoming more and more affordable. And hence, uh, I don't see that we are going to have uh, uh, more buildings which are approaching in a similar way, rather than be moving away from net zero uh, examples. That is that is very reassuring. So on behalf of all of us at Glass Academy, I'd like to thank you again for sharing your thoughts with us today. We'll connect with you further if, if any other questions come in from the audience yeah. and have them as well. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you.